Hello! Today I want to talk to you about fantasy. Not the Fifty Shades of Grey type, but the sort of Lord of the Rings type. One of my favourite films is The Princess Bride. I enjoy Lord of the Rings as well, The Hobbit, Game of Thrones and the like. Well, let me tell you a little something about fantasy gaming. My first experience of Dungeons and Dragons was when I was well, somewhere between 11 and 12 years old and with a friend we discovered this new game where we'd draw maps out dungeons on graph paper and be fighting giant rats. And it was basically about creating dungeons and giant rats and other monsters and things. There wasn't actually any role playing going on. But then later on started developing and started creating characters and enjoying it not for the killing so much of monsters but for the playing of a character. I remember one time a friend of mine created a scenario where we were trying to explore in some hills and we came across someone and we asked him what's in those hills and he said rocks yeah yeah well, okay go on what's in those hills come on what else is in those hills all oh, rocks rocks yeah big rocks okay we said so we carried on and sure enough these great big birds like giant emus the flying emus with huge beaks and nasty claws uh, called rocks ripped us to pieces there we go listen to the people there was a time when I was running an Arabian Adventures campaign and the party came across a genie and the genie offered them each a wish and the great thing about genies when you're running genies in, in games is that they're very literal. You've got to be extremely careful what you want. I gave them all a couple of minutes to work out exactly what they were going to ask the genie for. One of the party asked for a cloak that made him invisible. It certainly did. He put it on, he was invisible. He took it off, he was still invisible. You now try getting served, getting food, getting getting anything when you're permanently invisible. No problem for him. Didn't make anyone else invisible, just him. Useless thereafter. Another one said, I wish I had a wishing ring. Past tense, you'll notice. So, sure enough, suddenly the genie implanted a memory into his head. Yes, yes, he used to have a wishing ring. He's no idea where it is these days. It reminds me also of a game called Paranoia. This was set in a sort of dark future where there's been nuclear explosions and mankind is living in domed cities run by this maniacal computer. But anyway, part of the campaign was required them to test out um, various things from R&D, research and development. Um, one of the campaigns, we gave them a choice, right? But imagine you're in Q's laboratory, James Bond, and you're given a choice of anything you like. Someone said, rocket boots yeah okay no problem here you go here's some rocket boots now of course he's forced to test them out and the entire thing remember is based in corridors in a, in a dome and promptly he tested them out boom into the roof of the corridor dead another one asked for a heavy water pistol thinking this would be a far idea if I, you know nuclear water as it were no he was produced a water pistol with a great big tank on it on a trolley that he had to wheel around behind himself and he had to test this so fire it at his enemies and probably they killed him. Now this reminds me of another time I went to a games a game show about 30 years ago where a game of paranoia well, I thought it was when I first introduced the game was being run by one of the guys who wrote ex um, expansion scenarios for it and this definitely wasn't about going and killing monsters it was about the experience and partly it was also for the entertainment of the people around. To begin with, I was one of the, the team, one of the players of this game. And we were put in giant, great big cereal cardboard boxes that were supposedly re re meant to represent our wakey booths. Then we were lightly roused from our slumber. Then therefore, at this point, the, the crowd gets to shake us vigorously within these boxes. We were then given our morning breakfast of delicious Nutri Chips. These were dry cornflakes that we had to eat. And during the course of the um, adventure, Somebody suffered a serious injury and had to be operated upon. So they took this bloke, they laid him down on the table, they opened up his shirt, and the Dr. Fish gets to look at him. And Dr. Fish was a dead fish being wiped up and down this man's body. Um, and the incisions were drawn on a marker pen. Much the amusement of the crowd. I'm glad I didn't suffer that bit of it. Recently, I say, well, I mean, recently, in the last five years, I've been running a Serenity role playing game um, based on the Firefly and Serenity films. I don't know if you've seen these films, um, but they're basically sort of cowboys in space. But my crew, whilst they're given missions to go off and do, and I, you know, I write the mission based on the fact that they'll probably do it one night, or they could do it one night, they instead seem to spend most of their time at each other's throats, or some of them will be at each other's throats, and the other ones are trying to keep them apart. And they're fighting each other, they're shooting each other, 
Throwing grenades whilst in space. Yeah, that's going to be great for stru structural integrity. Hijacking the ship's system so that they can take control of it. Um, sometimes just for fun. Sometimes not maliciously. Um, electrifying doors so people can't get in and get electrocuted when they try it. Um, stitching other members up to the authority. We have one crew member who had... It was so we played a really creepy sort of ex-Nazi type um, experimental scientist, um, experimental doctor. I think Joseph Mengles, who always, if anyone died or got injured, he go, "Can I have the body?" And if they said no, well, can I have at least have the bullet that killed him? He was very creepy, and they he was they relied on him to be their doctor, and they were constantly saying things like, "Do not let the doctor anywhere near my body." I'll leave you now with something from Tim Vine. Last night, I dreamt I was the writer of Lord of the Rings. I was talking in my sleep.